afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Flights of Wonder. My name is Corey, and I'm just one of a whole team of researchers brought here to Anandapur to take care of and study all the beautiful birds you'll find in this ancient aviary. But the best part about my day is this. When I get to come out here and share all these incredible birds with you, they're very cool natural behaviors. We're going to get started with this guy. This is Miles. Miles is called a trumpeter hornbill. Trumpeter hornbills fly around the forests of Africa looking for lots of different things to eat, like fruit and insects but even flying insects. In fact, that's what we're gonna demonstrate with this grape here. I want you guys to imagine that this grape is a big, fat, juicy dragonfly when Miles in your spots. Ready, Miles, ready? There we go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is there somebody who wants to come up and try that? Somebody younger who wants to come up? You in the green, I saw your hand first. Yeah, the one in the front there. All right, I'll throw the grape up, you fly on up and catch it, okay? I'm just kidding, what's your name? Lisi? Lucy, oh, okay, Lucy, here, I'm gonna give you this grape. Why don't you turn and face the audience for me? When I count to three, you're gonna throw that underhand straight up in the air. Miles, you're ready to go? Lucy's got a grape for you. There we are. are ready, Lucy? One, two, three. Oh, oh, oh! Everything in place, she didn't lose anything. Okay, we won't worry about that. Miles, that was a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why you don't find flying grapes in the forests of Africa anymore. They do not stand a chance with a bird like Miles. You did such a good job. You can head on into the window. Yep, all the way up. Keep the momentum. Now to your left. And that was Miles, our trumpeter of Hornbill. Oh guys, I am glad you liked Miles because we have a lot of very cool birds for you to see today. Big birds, small birds, even a few strange ones. Hey, have those cameras out you ready. People We're gonna are. Be I have been looking all over fast. for you. Uh, Let's review this again, shall we, folks? Uh, I am the tour guide. This is the flag. You're supposed to follow the flag. Uh, so, <laughs> excuse me. Oh, hi. Can I help you? Uh, no, I was just looking for my tour group. Oh, well, all right, right, folks. Let's no, review wait, F L A G. Me? That's the way you Back follow me. The flag. <laughs> the flag. <laughs> Everyone, help. help. Hey. Hi. 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 We just started a show here. Uh, oh, you're doing a show? Yeah. Oh, is this the Lion King? Arr. Are you Mufasa? Arr. Do I look like Mufasa? Yeah, maybe a little bit with there. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? Why, I'm the goddess of all things tourist. I'm the Guano Jane. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding. You're Guano Jane. Uh huh. Famous traveler, explorer, adventurer, that Guano Jane. Yep, shorts model, too. Uh, very, very nice. Yeah, guys, she is a legend around here. Hey, my name is Corey. Oh, I'm nice one of the researchers here. Nice to meet you, Corey. Nice to meet you. Hey, I have a wonderful idea. So, this is your tour group, right? Uh huh. Well, since they're already seated in the theater, you're up here on stage. Why don't you stay and help us with the show? Really? Yeah. You could be our celebrity guest. Ooh, well, yeah, sure, that sounds like fun. That's great. Guano Jane's gonna stay and help us with the birds. Wait, wait, this wait. is awesome. And you guys will love our next Wait, 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 wait. We're birds. birds. Birds? Yeah, it's a free flighted bird show. Flights it is. Of wonder. Oh, look at that. What? Oh, oh, you know, I, oh, I just remembered something. What? Um, we're busy. What, what do you mean you're busy? Uh, I mean, we're gonna go. Ah! What? Ah! What? Ah! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. Jane, it's, it's a chicken. Did you see that thing that was after me? It was not. Yeah, it had a foul look in its eyes. Oh. Yeah. Well, what's going on? You don't understand, Corey. I have a serious condition. That's obvious. Yeah. No, I have fob. I, I don't know what fob is. Fob, fear of birds. Oh, come on, Jane, we travel the world. Birds it are everywhere. Hey, touch what? me. Oh, look at that. Hey. This, hey. this is Poe. Hey. Oh, hey. That's Stop. Right. Hey. Stop. Come back here. People, uh -oh. do not follow that flag. <laughs> All right, get it, Corey. Get uh, it. Did you need that, Jane? Um, hello, I'm a tour guide. Nobody's going to follow a stick. Probably not. Take it as a sign. A sign? A sign you should stay. Nah, I don't think so. Oh, come on. You guys want Guano Jane to stay, right? Yeah. I like you people. All right, I'll 
Valentine's Day, but you know what I want to see? What's that? I want to see one of those birdies on a bicycle. Yeah, get oh. right by. <laughs> Jane, we, we don't have any birds riding bicycles here. Why not? Well, we like to focus on the natural behavior of the birds. Yeah, well, what's more natural than a bird on a bike? <laughs> Jane, a natural behavior, something you see out in the wild. Oh, yeah. You've seen that? Uh-huh. In the wild? Uh-huh. When? When I went to a Rolling Stones concert. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a lot of things that day. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, no birds on bikes. I've got a great pair of them. I'm gonna bring them center stage. Everyone's gonna love you're, them. You're gonna bring them out here? Yes. All right. You know, I need a place to hide. You're, you're hiding from a parrot? Yeah. Could you help me out? All right. Why don't? Oh, why don't you hide by the tree over there? All right. Will I be safe? Sure. Birds hate trees. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, I need your help though, real quick. I need you to pick someone from your tour group to come up and help us out. Yeah. Okay. I need someone between the ages of eight and ten years old. Yeah. Who wants to come up on stage, but they have to be very, very good at math. But I have to be good at math. You young lady in the green, you want to come up here? Come on, all the way to the end. There we go. All the way to the end. Now, how many of you have heard of talking parrots before? I'm sure a number of you have. What you may not know, talking is actually a natural behavior for parrots. But see, they're not talking the way you and I are talking. What they're doing is they're copying or mimicking the sounds they hear in their environment. Now, a parrot in the wild, they may mimic the, other, the sounds of the other birds in their flock, but the parrot that lives in the home, thank you, Miranda, parrot in the home will often mimic the sounds that we make, and sometimes that sounds a lot like talking. Now, I have a great mimicker here. His name is Keebler. He's an African gray parrot, but he likes to introduce himself. Can you say, hi, Keebler? Hi, Keebler. <laughs> yeah, there's some of that mimicker there. All right, Jane, who do we have? Can you say your name right in the microphone? Carly. Carly! Give her a big round of applause! Okay, Carly, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a math competition between you and Keebler here. All you have to do is answer into your microphone before Keebler answers into his. Got it? Okay, let's get started. All right, Carly, Keebler, first question. What is one plus three? Four. Good one, Carly. Not bad. But the bird was fast. The bird was fast. All right, let's, let's, let's keep going. Let's try another one. Uh, let's try this one. Let's do seven minus three. <laughs> he's fast. He's real quick. He was fast, Carl. Okay. You know, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a little tougher question. People will have to think a little bit. All right, All right, let's try this one. Let's do 12 divided by three. <laughs> <laughs> the divided by are harder, aren't they? They're hard. Carly, you seem to be having a good time. Here's what we'll do. We'll throw out all those questions. We'll just do one more for the grand prize. Winner, take all. You guys think Carly can do it, right? Yeah, come on, Carly! Uh, here we go, ready? Last question for the grand prize. Carly, Keebler, what is two plus two? Four. Yeah! yeah! Right there! You did it, Carly. You win the grand prize. It's a sunflower seed. <laughs> about $8 on the park. <laughs> Carly, we're just kidding with it. Yeah, you're much better at math than Keebler is. Watch this. Hey, Keebler, what's 100 plus 3? <laughs> <laughs> Silly bird, it's 104. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Keebler here, he's smart, but he doesn't know math. See, what he knows are cues. Yeah, every time I want Keebler here to say the number 4, all I do is say is Q, which happens to be the number three. Yeah, see how that works? No, I better leave it work if I say something that just sounds like it's Q. Hey, Keebler, what would you say if you hit your golf ball over a tree? <laughs> that works if you think about it. Let's give Carly a nice round of applause. Take a bow, take a bow. Good job. That was a good job. I tell you what, that bird's amazing. He is, isn't he? Yeah, I bet everybody sees him and they think, I want to go get a bird like that. Oh, well, I can see why you'd say that. Parrots up on stage, they look like a lot of fun. But to tell you the truth, they are a very difficult pet to have in the household. They are. Oh yeah. Why? There's lots of reasons. They <laughs> fight really hard. Scream incredibly loud. They're also a very huge commitment. See, a parrot the size of Keebler could live to be 60 years old. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't know they were so smart. Oh yeah, there are a lot of smart birds out there. You want to meet another smart parrot? You gonna bring him out here? Bring him right out here. Right out here? <laughs> I'm gonna go by the tree. <laughs> Okay, the rest of us will meet Foster. Now, Foster is called a rose-breasted cockatoo. There he is. Where they're found in Australia, they're often called galahs. Now, to show how smart Foster here is, I'm going to need another volunteer. But this time, I need an adult with a dollar bill. Is there an adult? Man, you shot right up. All right, you probably want to put the baby down. Yeah. 
All right, all I need is a dollar from you. I'm borrowing from the neighbors, that is an excellent idea. All right, once you have that, oh, you can stay right where you're at. All we need is your money. Yeah, go ahead and fold that in half for me, and then fold it in half one more time to make a nice tight rectangle. Perfect. Hold that between your fingers and put your arms straight out to the side. All right, Foster, you see it out there? He knows what to do. He's gonna fly out. Grab that dollar, bring it to me. Now where's it go? Right in the pocket. Excellent work, Foster. Thank you, miss. Enjoy the show. Anybody over here have a $20 bill? No, I'm just kidding. We'll bring that dollar back. Go ahead and stand up again. This time, yeah, arm like that, palm flat to the sky. All right, Foster, you have, you have finished that treat? All right, you can take that dollar back now. He'll take it, put it right in the palm of your hand. That's a wonderful job. Let's give a nice round of applause for our volunteer. Well, now there's something you don't see every day. Yeah. Yeah, money back at a theme park. <laughs> <laughs> Just proves what I've always said, Corey. What's that? All birds are smart. Uh, not all birds are that smart. Oh. Not all birds are smart. People pay attention. <laughs> you know what? That reminds me of a misconception. I bet everyone out here has heard it. It's, called, it's the one about the wise old what? Owl. 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 Chicken. Wise old? Owl. No, it's chicken. I graduated from the University of KFC. <laughs> you guys are right. It's the wise old owl. It's owls. Not as smart as people believe they are. Yeah, they don't need to be. They're only as smart as they need to be to survive. And besides, intelligence is in everything. Right, Jane? Four? <laughs> Good answer. Come on up here. Ah. I need your help with this out. What do you need? I need you to pick two more people to, uh, to come up on stage. I need two people with cameras or video cameras who want to come up on stage to get the photo opportunity right. of a lifetime. Well, Hold those have, cameras up high. You'll sit right there in the gray with the, uh, yep, with the hat on. Come on this way. And you, man, with the stripes. Come on this way. Get all the way down to the end for me. Now, as I said, owls, not as smart as people believe they are. They don't need to be. They have some incredible adaptations to help them survive, even thrive, during the nighttime. For one, those very, very large eyes. Helps them see in moonlight or starlight. Hearing it better than just about any other animal out there, but also they can fly almost silently. In fact, that's what we're gonna demonstrate here in just a minute. So everyone needs to pay very close attention, especially you guys through here. This is gonna be our Raptor runway, so let's make sure it stays clear. All right, Jane, who do we have? We have Cindy and Jason. Give them a big round of applause. Right, Cindy and Jason, why don't you take a seat on this box facing the audience for me? There we go. All right, so Jason, uh, video camera? Yeah, just go ahead. You can record the whole thing. Just keep it on a wide angle lens. If you zoom in, you'll miss the wingspan. Cindy, it's a little bit different. I'm gonna call an owl from this window to my left. Okay. He's gonna fly out over everyone's head, land on the stump in the back where you see Miranda. All right, so here's where that camera comes in. Go ahead and focus it right about here. Right, get that up and ready. Because once he gets back, he's going to turn around and make his way up to stage. You're going to try and get that photo in his flight path. So Cindy, the point that he gets here, that's when you want to snap that shutter, then both of you guys get those cameras out of the way quick, just before that impact. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. There's no impact. The last second, he'll swoop up over your heads, land in this stump right behind you. It's close, and he very rarely misses. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's meet him. His name is JJ. He's a great horned owl. Yeah, he's gonna come out of this window right there and all the way to the back. There we go. Yeah, great horned owls. One of the most wanted species of owl found in North America. Yeah, and this guy, he's gonna head right up here in a second. Ready? Yeah! Did you guys get it? Yeah? Excellent. Why don't you come over here before you really get it? Yeah, you don't want to sit under an owl for too long. Yeah, if you guys want to stop here, you can get some more footage, take another shot of this bird that just flew right over your head. Hey, JJ, why don't you look over here? There, that's a nice picture there. Excellent job. Once again, JJ, great horn owl. You two did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. Let's give a nice round of applause for our volunteers. Hey, they were brave, huh? They were really brave. Well, I know, amazing. When are you going to be that brave? Yeah. <laughs> I think our next bird will help you. Yeah. It's got a really cool natural behavior. Yeah, you're going to love it, but I need this. Oh, what is that? It's a fake lizard. Oh. Is it going to sell us car insurance? <laughs> you know what? Let's name the lizard after you. 
Let's name her Little Jane. How about oh, that? Oh, that's nice. Okay, so everyone imagine that Little Jane here is a real live lizard. He's down in the grasslands of South America, basking on a rock, uh, minding his own business, when along comes Sluggo, oh, the red-legged Sariana. Oh. And Sluggo's gonna sneak up on Little old Jane there, sneak up, grab her, and Bam. slam her. Hey! Like that. What was that? That's what Sariamas do. So they eat things like rodents, reptiles, small animals. When they find one, they find a nice hard surface and pulverize it just like that. Yeah, that does a couple things. One, it kills little Jane. But also breaks up the bones, makes it nice and juicy and squishy, so Sluggo here can swallow nice and whole. Let's do one more good one. That one was excellent. You did great there, Sluggo. I'm gonna give you one last treat. You did such a wonderful job. All right, did you get everything? Or did I throw a piece? Yeah, I threw a piece and missed. Yeah, you got them all now. Excellent job. That was Sluggo, our red-legged Sariyama. <laughs> what do you think of that, Jane? <laughs> I think Sluggo shouldn't babysit. Wait! <laughs> Jane, why, why don't you take a, a quick break? I can bring out a smaller bird. Hello. All right. Okay, I'm gonna bring out a hawk next. Uh, He's gonna fly hawk. all the way to the back. Wait, wait, Everyone wait. Everyone agree you. These people don't want to see a hawk. What do you mean? They came to a bird show. I no, no, they no, want no, to see a hawk. Take a vote. Take a vote? Yeah, take a vote and see if they want to see that. Okay, everybody. I guess uh, Jane wants to... I love me. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> Let her hear it. Who wants to see a hawk fly? <laughs> Let's meet him. His name is Orion. He's a Harris hawk. He's going to come out of that window there, fly all the way to the back to my end. Oh, there he goes. Now, Harris hawks are found in the desert southwest United States. Places like Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. Great places to find a bird like this. And Harris hawks, they are unique. Oh you see, they're one of few birds of prey that will actually hunt in family groups. Two or three of these birds can team up together, hunt prey that they normally couldn't on their own. That can be something up to the size of a jackrabbit. It's a very important strategy because of the harsh desert regions that these birds live in. You know what? They need that extra edge. You see, 75% of all birds of prey hatch down in the wild. There he is. Yeah, 75% don't make it past their first year of life. Really? Well, why is that? Well, it's due to a lot of causes. Most of it is natural causes. But a lot of these birds are still being shot. Really? Blood. Yeah. Well, I thought it was illegal to shoot birds of prey. Oh, it is illegal. It's unfortunate, too, because these hawks play a very important role in the environment. They help keep down rodent populations, so we love having hawks like Orion around. All right, bud, you're doing a wonderful job. You're ready to make one more flight right up here. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was a great one. You did an excellent job. Thank you. That was Orion, our Harris hawk. Yeah, incredible hunters. Yeah, even a hawk as small as Orion might eat 800 to 1,000 mice in a single year. Wow. Well, you know, that explains it. What's that? I haven't seen a rat or a mouse around here in a really long time. Oh, yeah. We used to be infested with them. Yeah, all over the place. Big rats? Yeah. Now we have big Giant rats. Giant rats. Everywhere. Crazy. But you know what? I am so glad that that rat problem is behind us. <laughs> hey, those parts are really beneficial, aren't they? Oh yeah, beneficial and beautiful. Take our next bird, for example. Probably one of the most beautiful birds found in the African savannas. It's called an East African crown crane. Oh yeah, right over there with its arms here. Right, I'm gonna call this bird to stage and get a nice look at the six foot wingspan. All right guys, those of you in this section, yeah, keep those heads low. He flies with that landing gear down. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Frazier. <laughs> Frazier Crane. Ah. Now, crown cranes get their name from that golden burst of feathers on the top of their head. They eat things like seeds, grains, but also insects. Insects will destroy farmers' crops, even spread disease. Oh. Hey, Jane. Yeah. I've got quite a bit of food here. Yeah. You want to feed Frazier? What? Yeah. He's me. Come on, you guys think Jane should feed the crane, right? Yeah. Put your hands into a bowl, just like that. I'm gonna give you some food. Frazier will come right out of your hand. Are you ready to go? Oh my gosh. Woo! 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 I'd love to see one of these guys out in the wild. That'd be something. That would be an incredible sight to see. Let's 
tough one to find these days. Okay, you see crown crane numbers, they're dropping in the wild due to habitat loss, pollution, even poisoning. Oh, you can't imagine a world without a beautiful creature like that. That's why it's up to all of us to help protect these birds. Yeah, protect them we will, right folks? Yeah. Seems like it's really tough for the birds out there in the wild. Well, yeah, it can be tough on a lot of animals out there, not just birds. But I don't mean to bring you down. There are a lot of bright spots in the conservation horizon as well. Really? Yeah. Huh. Why don't you share a bright spot? Okay, I have a great story for you. It's the story of the national symbol of the United States of America. <laughs> the bald eagle. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is hope. And hope is a living symbol of one of the greatest conservation success stories of our lifetime. See, it wasn't that long ago the bald eagle's numbers began to drop. They dropped so low it was feared future generations would never get a chance to see these majestic birds in the wild. But that's when something incredible happened. People took notice and they took action. They started cleaning up the waterways where the bald eagles fish and stopped using a chemical pesticide called DDT was a major cause for this and many other birds to climb. Wow. So you mean people like these folks here, they made a difference for the bald eagle just by taking care of the environment? Exactly right, Jane. And people's efforts paid off. The bald eagle's numbers began to rise. They rose so high that just recently the bald eagle was officially removed from the endangered species list. Wow. Thank you, Miranda, and thank you, Hope. You know, that story just goes to show the power that we all have to help protect animals all over the world. All it takes is doing something as simple as cleaning up our own environment. Hey, you know what, Corey? Yeah. I'm really glad you asked me to stick around for the show. Yeah? Yeah, you know, I may have lost my flag, but at least I found Hope, right? <laughs> and I fed that big bird out of my hands. You fed the biggest bird that in the show. show. Hey! What? Come on. Hey! Who came back? I think that's yours. Will you give can, it to me? can you give that to Jane? Look at that! That's my flag! Is that the... Oh! <laughs> it's also my flag. Hey, that's alright. It's a thought that comes, right? Jane, I think you made a connection with our birds today. Well, you know what? The world's our greatest gift, and it's up to all of us to preserve it. Very well said. And we as humans, we're the only species on this planet with the ability to do that. See, it just takes simple things like conserving, recycling, supporting conservation efforts. Yeah, like the Worldwide Conservation Fund that gives these animal kingdoms. Yeah. By doing things like that, we can help protect birds from all over the world. Birds like blue and gold macaws, three-winged macaws, spectacle owls like the one over here with Jared, Battlemore eagles like the one over there with Scott, and even chickens too. I once heard it said, we're not inheriting this earth from our parents, we're simply borrowing it from our children. Remember, friends, the heart and spirit of all living creatures share a common connection. So on behalf of all the living creatures here, especially those with feathers, we'd like to leave you with this wish. May your hearts take flight, and may your spirit soar forever. Namaste. great audience. Feel free to come up to the edge of the stage, talk to the researchers, take pictures of our birds while they're still out, but most of all, have a wonderful rest of your day here in the Nanda Bye everyone! Bye.